Hello, friends. My name is Fred. Don't watch this show. Velma's worse than this dude's chance at a GED. I'm about four, four locos in. <laughs> I decided to check out Velma because all I've heard is how terrible this show is, and I just had to see it for myself. My report, it's as bad as everyone's making it out to be. Yep. It's very possible this is the worst show ever made. It looked at She-Hulk and scoffed. The crown's been taken. If this show was a person, it'd look like this. And it's bringing people together from both sides of the aisle. In fact, America hasn't been this united since Pearl Harbor. The universal hatred for this show might be the catalyst for world peace. No matter what your background is, what political party you're in, we all agree, the TV show known as Velma is an absolute turd. Imagine being in my shoes, a person who likes talking about bad movies and shows. Velma drops and you see intros like these. I went where no one should go. I watched the first two episodes of Velma. Honestly, the only reason I decided to give this show a go is because people are sadistic and like seeing me unhappy. Maybe Velma won't be that bad. Hey Siri. What's a self-insert character? I just watched Velma. Did that show suck? It's, it's, it really is quite something. I think it's going to be fodder for uh, YouTube content creators for a few weeks. Like, I'm even going to watch it and do a video on it because I want to. <laughs> I want to hate watch this thing. Uh, yeah, that's right. I thought I was going to enjoy hate watching this. I anticipated a so bad it's good situation, like the room or something. You can come out now, Johnny. She's gone. In a few minutes, bitch. But I ended up just getting angry that this show even exists. The idea behind Velma is our Scooby-Doo crew, minus Scooby-Doo, brought into the modern day. The show follows a younger version of the gang. Fred is the alpha male douche who's a pathetic man-baby, and Not Shaggy is a beta male simp future incel. Meanwhile, Velma's a whiny, shallow, unlikable brat who has a crush on Daphne, who's a closet l lesbian drug-dealing bully. Are you following me? We are with the gang as people are getting their brains cut out around town. Rich white bitch Fred is blamed for it, and Velma tries to solve the case while simultaneously grappling with the crippling anxiety brought on by her mother's disappearance. That's really all you need to know about the plot, because it's supposed to be a comedy, so the biggest concern is, is it funny? And no. No, it's not. As a modern update of Scooby-Doo, it's a disgrace and a travesty. As a comedy, this seems like it would be funnier. The comedy style of Velma is stale, on the nose, repetitive, uninspired, obvious, and worst of all, unfunny. It's also incredibly mean-spirited, and seems to absolutely fucking hate its own audience and every single character on the show. Do you remember how meta The Matrix Resurrections was? Do you also remember how that's one of the worst movies ever made? Think of that, but Scooby-Doo given an adult rating. Most jokes are some form of blunt meta-commentary, like the writers were sniffing their own farts over how clever they are, as if the audience is so stupid they'll mistake buzzwords for humor. And how do you feel about race-blind casting, Daphne? Oh, they mention race and they switch the race of the characters. Dang, that's some real funny fucking shit right there. There are constant attempts at cleverness with misdirection, where the setup makes you think one thing and the punchline's another, but it falls completely flat, feels dated, and is frankly embarrassing. Exactly. I spit truth without a filter, like every comedian before hashtag me too. Look. Now there's that joke, then there's this one with the actual misdirection. I just read the biography of the guy who invented Super Mario Brothers. Did you know when he was a kid, people used to laugh at him when he would kill turtles with a hammer. <laughs> Velma's lazy version of this joke writing style is what I consider family guy comedy. Jokes that are interchangeable from scenario to scenario, able to be dropped in at any point in the episode and it wouldn't change anything. Velma goes even further with attempts at replicating family guy with the excessive into absurdity gag. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. Thank you. Seth MacFarlane, everybody, huh? This is MacFarlane's third time hosting the show, which should come as no surprise, because when Seth MacFarlane does something, by God, he repeats the living shit out of it. Not only is this style of comedy, as a rule of thumb, considered lowbrow and uninspired, it's also replicated poorly to the point where there are no redeeming qualities whatsoever to its style of humor. And that's just the comedic style. I haven't even touched on what they say and talk about. 
Let's start with Velma, who is the textbook Wikipedia Urban Dictionary definition of a self-insert. Because she is her voice actress, Mindy Kaling, Velma as a character is unbelievably unlikable. She's a self-insert to the point where Velma looks like her. It's like a backwards Mary Sue. Regarding representation, Mindy's quoted as saying, I love this opportunity I have now to be able to have representation of modern Indian American teens. There's not a lot of representation of Indian American girls in 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s animation. And so what I loved about that character, she's the closest to what I can see. Smart, A student, thick glasses that are always falling off, and skeptical. She has a lot of these amazing qualities, so as a kid watching the reruns of the original Scooby-Doo, I felt like, man, I really identify with this character. So she relates to the character because she was smart with thick glasses, and when given the chance to write the character, she added the qualities of being self-centered, hateful, and spiteful. Nice. Well, I can say I never want to be around someone who relates to this version of the character, because something tells me they'd be a real piece of shit. Mindy Kaling, who's responsible for this abomination of a TV show, turns Velma into a cartoon version of herself, which explains why the character is insecure, full of self-hatred, angst and disgust for everything around her, and generally makes everything worse for the viewer when she's on the screen, which kind of sucks since she's, you know, the main character. Every personal issue Mindy Kaling has made public is present in Velma, and it's been made clear this is her go-to for characters throughout her career, from obsession over body image, her own race, every bit of Mindy Kaling's personal issues are on full display for everyone to see in the character of Velma. It makes sense, though, that she'd still connect with the teenage character. The depth at which Velma experiences these outwardly off-putting emotions are on the same level a teenager would. And that's just another sign that people in Hollywood don't grow up, and speaks to how much of a bubble they live in. It's why the show feels like it was written by a 13-year-old edgelord, because in a lot of ways, it really was. But that's the lead character. We haven't even touched on what they did to Fred. Well, I guess we can start with what they didn't do. He's the only character not race-swapped, but it's a modern TV show, so you have to, one, have one white dude, two, make him an incompetent buffoon, and three, embarrass the shit out of him. Velma makes sure to take all three modern requirements and ramps it up to 11 on poor Fred, who's not just a complete fucking moron in this show. They infantilize him to the point where there are two separate running gags throughout the show about how he can't cut his own food and he has a baby carrot-sized Johnson. He was just another entitled rich guy who might kill someone because he has a tiny dong. Fred literally can't feed himself. Oh. <laughs> hey yo, what the fuck? Most of this doesn't even require commentary. I could just show you the scenes and the shittiness sort of speaks for itself. So he's a spoiled rich white kid, and we know this because his whiteness is referenced a number of times, who's so pampered his body hasn't even gone through puberty yet. Yes, this is an actual talking point in the show. Fred's personality seems like it was written by a person who thinks all men lose it on their wives if they dry the can opener off improperly. It's gonna fucking rust! Adaptations of Fred haven't always been kind. I'm a man of substance. Dorky chicks like you turn me on too. But in Velma, Fred's an intentionally cruel buffoon, instead of the unintentionally cruel one from the movies. You cheat off me in Spanish because you think I'm Mexican. I have a disease where I can't recognize people who aren't hot. Like Velma, he's just an unlikable character for the other characters to mock. For Daphne, she's the daughter of two moms and is a side drug dealer who picks on others and is generally a giant piece of shit. Do you spot a theme yet? Through the first few episodes, she's playing a former friend now rival to Velma, and it's like watching two people you hate fight each other, you just wish both could lose. And apparently she's Asian American, which you can't tell because the animation style is so poor, but at least she still retains her red hair. Last but not least is Shaggy, who isn't actually Shaggy, but he is Shaggy. And how do you feel about race-blind casting, Daphne? And he's just a walking, talking example of a simp. It's not just the main cast that gets it. All the characters in this show appear to be written by people who hate themselves. Daphne's moms are incompetent. Fred's dad is toxically masculine. You can basically apply this description to any character. Pathetic, rude, angsty, selfish, and downright annoying. It feels like there's a bit of Minnie Kaling in all of them. All this and I haven't even touched on the show's association with Scooby-Doo. Or rather, how funny it is they're not allowing the character of Scooby to be associated with this show. 
For a fully rounded critique, I need to mention it, but it practically goes without saying how disgustingly different this is from what the original cartoon was. I was never sour on the idea of an adult-oriented Scooby-Doo spinoff, but this is the result we got, and when the exclusion of Scooby from the show, looks like Warner Brothers might have known they had a tragedy on their hands early on. Mindy Kaling sang the praises of this franchise, and gave her a reason behind the race swap of characters, quoted as saying, Why not make the character Indian? We've been so inspired by Into the Spider-Verse and seeing these other characters that can embody the spirit of these iconic franchises. Why don't we try that? We love Scooby-Doo so much and we're going to honor it. Well, considering the results, I don't think she's satisfied any of those pursuits. Race swapping then giving the character horrible personality traits isn't helping anyone, I don't think. And not sure what you consider honoring something, but the disaster that is Velma isn't it. It's everything wrong with modern media packed into a single show. It takes a classic IP and seasons it with a modern spin. There's nothing about this show that says it likes the Scooby-Doo franchise. It's hatefully, spitefully meta and actively talks about how much it hates the audience watching it. And it employs every single modern day trope there is. We have the two moms, the gay lead character, a diverse cast, the white male character is an incapable dipshit, and every character is a narcissist, but we're supposed to like Velma even when she does terrible things because she's the main character. When you have a lead character act selfish, indignant, and awful to everyone around her, then you have a writer who doesn't understand why the audience doesn't like her. Makes me suspect that, being a self-insert, the writers might just not be very self-aware. Therapy is recommended. Stop taking it out on Scooby-Doo fans. Even the animation style is awful. I'm far from a snob when it comes to visual art. I appreciate the spectrum of styles. Almost. This modern, brightly lit, and sketchy outline style is an absolute eyesore. South Park's animation style has become endearing, but imagine if the show wasn't funny. We'd probably hate it. That might be the case here. If the show actually made me laugh, I'd probably be more forgiving of its other aspects. When this show's trailer dropped, it was panned far and wide, and it looked like HBO Max was going to use the now tried-and-true Hollywood defense of ist and ism words to explain away the hatred. In fact, here's a clip I've talked about before, but it's a perfect example of it, when Moist Critical was giving his thoughts on the Velma trailer. Man, this screams like a show made by people that hate the audience that they're borrowing the IP from. What, what is the point? Like, why not just make your own original one? Why immediately antagonize people who just want Scooby-Doo? Why, why is everyone who works in the industry so angry all the time? Why do you just keep saying white guy take? What? Is that bait or a joke? The, the literal opening line to this is just immediately shitting on legitimately everyone that would have cared about Scooby-Doo. It's meta in the worst way. What's the point? You made a show that immediately shits on people that like the property. Why? Why use the property then just make your own? Why do you think- are you- are you- are you being serious? I can't- who is in this chat right now? Why do you think caring about Scooby-Doo entails keeping a character white then? I haven't said anything about her skin color. This is the most Twitter shit of all time. But the hate for the trailer proved prophetic, as the show is, quite simply, a train wreck. It was so bad it actually nullified the fan baiting. And I find myself asking, who is this show actually for? It seems to be hated by the entire human population, so how could a show go so wrong? What were their goals? It has something to offend everyone. Stale, unfunny jokes mocking cancel culture and the Me Too movement to offend the left, Gen Z narcissistic stand-ins to offend the right, and a self-insert as the glue to hold it all together, the thing that annoys everybody. It makes sense because as the actual human being Velma is based on, Mindy Kaling is attacked from both liberals and conservatives because, and I respect her for this, she at least has a nuanced set of values, weird as some of them are. Maybe Velma really is the answer to world peace. Mindy Kaling, while being apparently horrible at adapting animation, can be the example needed to help us find common ground. Wow, you guys. Maybe this show's life-changing. <laughs> I absolutely hate this show. Like, to the point where I can't even enjoy hate watching it. But I won't say I'm not going to watch the rest, because I said it about She-Hulk, I said it about Rings of Power, and I still went back and watched the rest of those shows after hating the first couple episodes. But I'd advise not watching this show if you want to maintain control of your bowels. GG's, gents.